What up guys, it's your girl T. One of you guys asked me to explain how I fit my hair under wigs. Now truth be told, because I primarily wear like big kinky curly wigs when I do wear them, I don't really have too much of a problem disguising doo-doo braids or doo-doo twists underneath. The hair is big so it will conceal any major lumps and bumps. There's really nothing special going on underneath there. But since I have been experimenting with other wig styles recently, you know, like more straight-ish styles and things like that, and I do need my hair to be more flat sometimes. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but I'm pretty sure I have, but while I can understand objectively how to cornrow, the execution, the execution is just not there. Anytime I try to cornrow, it looks super tragic, like real, real sad. I think it's primarily because I don't blow dry my hair and my hair is just too shrinky, dinky, kinky for me to be able to master the art of actually executing the cornrows, even though I understand how to do it. That leads me to one of two ways that I tend to go to. So I either will, instead of cornrow, I will flat twist because even my flat twisting's not great, but it's just a lot easier and more manageable for me to do that than it is to do cornrows. You guys got a glimpse of that in one of my recent videos. I can't quite remember which one, but if I do during the process of editing and uploading, I'll link it here. So you guys were able to see just, it's basically just straight back flat twists that I do. And if I don't do that, because that is rather time consuming for me and and it's just kind of a pain in the ass. My much easier way is to do basically what I call piggyback braids. I didn't come up with that term, it's just a term I think I spotted somewhere on the internet and it's the perfect way to explain it. It's basically just plaits where you start plaiting from the front of your head to the back and you can do however many rows you want of them. Lately I've just been doing two. One on each side of my head where you braid a braid in the front then you take that braid and braid it into another braid behind it, and then you take that braid and then you braid it into another braid behind it. So you're basically making however many plaits you want from front to back and from across your head, but because you're braiding each braid down into the braid that it's, that's behind it, it, get, it gets your hair a lot flatter than just having a bunch of loose sealy braids flopping around on your head. So that's how my hair is currently, and I wore this short wig today just to kind of show you guys that even if you can't cornrow, you can use various methods and techniques to get your hair flat enough to get away with wearing a shorty do like this. The real key to this, and this is especially if I'm only doing the two sections, one on each side of my head, is to make sure that my hair is as wet as possible when I'm putting those braids in, because with my hair texture, it's kind of like I don't have any hair if I do braids or twists when, when my hair is very wet, like just fresh out of the shower. This was something I discovered kind of the hard way when I would try to style my hair when it was still really wet and I noticed that my twists would always look super scalpy and thin. Like if I actually want to do twists that I want to wear as twists and look cute, I have to let my hair dry a bit because it doesn't, it doesn't really swell enough if I put the twists in while it's wet. My hair looks kind of like stringy and thin when it's wet, but letting it dry a bit will cause it to swell and poof and look a lot more full. So I use that stringiness and thinness to my advantage and that's when I'm really able to kind of like pull my hair tautly, not tightly because you guys know I have struggle edges as it is, but I use the wetness of my hair and the fact that my hair kind of vanishes while it's wet to my advantage to help kind of stretch it and pull it flat as I'm braiding. And it also helps keep the braids rather tight and compact as opposed to trying to braid on damp or dry hair. If I tried to do this on my hair while it was dry or even still just damp, the braids would be a lot thicker and juicier, which is not what I want when I'm trying to fit it under a wig. So that's really the only takeaway here. It's not like I'm doing anything special in terms of like fitting my hair under a wig with the types of braids or anything that I'm doing. Like anyone can do plaits or piggyback plaits. It's the fact that I'm doing it on freshly washed, still very wet hair. And even in this demo that, I mean, the wig I'm trying on is not the same wig I'm wearing right now. Um, I just didn't feel like wearing that wig today. But I'll just turn around really quickly so you guys can see that there aren't any like really insane looking lumps or bumps in my head from the two braids because again, as you piggyback each braid, you're gonna wind up with just one braid on each side in the end. And it doesn't really look crazy, at least not to me. Maybe I'm tripping. And that is it. That is how I fit all of my hair under wigs most of the time. Sometimes I will put in the extra time and effort to do flat twists and maybe one of these days I will actually learn how to cornrow properly. But for the most part, this is the easiest, fastest way for me to 
get my hair flat enough to wear wigs if I know I'm going to be wigging it for a while. And with me trying to grow out my shaved side, officially, I've been wearing a lot more wigs lately because when I actually try to style my own hair, it's pretty hard not to look insane when you've got like three or four inches of hair over here and then like long hair everywhere else. And that's it. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs>